Last week, The Daily Show got a new host after Jon Stewart retired. It's not a liberal piece of crap anymore! When the clock strikes half past six, babe, time to head for golden light. It's a good time for a great taste dinner at The Daily Show with Trevor Noah, first week. Please forgive the limited clip selection. Converting videos is hard. If anyone has a good way to convert MKV to MP4 or some other format without losing quality, please let me know. As it stands, there is some quality loss, but it's not anything too terrible. September 29th, 2015. From Comedy Central's World News Headquarters in New York, this is The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. The new host of The Daily Show is a black man from South Africa by the name of Trevor Noah. He has a neat accent, good delivery, and what seems to be possibly some better writers. I viewed an entire week of the new show, and it actually swung left, right, and center at about an equal rate. That's a huge improvement from when I last watched when even regardless of what the show's writers chose to do, which was usually make fun of the right all the time, Jon Stewart would very often take a guest and devolve the interview into a conversation on some left-wing pet issue of his. All of Trevor Noah's interviews so far have been great and unbiased, and the jokes have been funny. Here, take a listen political stars, the U.S., Russia, Iran, Uganda. I'm, I'm just joking about Uganda. No one was... Yeah, that's, that's when the media goes out to charge their phones. They don't care about Uganda. Hi, Uganda. Now, the following clips are taken from the exact same episode. You'll see that they carefully balance their targets. Pay attention and take note. Congratulations, doctor. The man who hangs out with these people all day thinks you're a genius. I love the Kardashians. No, no, I love the Kardashians. But I love jokes more. And it looks like the admiration is mutual. Well, I did have an opportunity to talk with him. I was extremely impressed with his business acumen. I talked to him about the possibility of maybe himself and some of the other uh, people in the pop culture uh, doing some, some music that might be uplifting, that might give young women a sense of their value and young men a sense of responsibility. Oh, wow. Look, I understand the need to pander, but I don't think you two even know who you're pandering to. Kanye, man, do your research. You can't just look for the black guy. You're picking a president, not who's on your basketball team. Just look at the things Ben Carson says. Because of our faith, because of our family, because of our values. And as we allow the, the hip-hop community to destroy those things for us, we continue to deteriorate. Yeah. We continue to deteriorate. And I'm sure Dr. Ben Carson could find something he likes about hip-hop. For example, the rampant hobophobia. You see? You guys have more in common than you think. <laughs> no homo. The trick is to find the perfect match between celebrity. Now, one quick thing here. I want to point out that while that last thing was pretty dang liberal, all right, at the same time, it also kind of was a little bit conservative because it was making fun of the hip hop community, which is something that you would see out of a conservative more likely than a liberal. So there's that. And I also want to point out that that attack is really not fair to either side. Now let's watch him take a shot at some SJW. And politician. Hillary Clinton is reaching out to millennial voters as part of a new sit-down interview with award-winning actress Lena Dunham. That's right. Hillary knows how to win the nation. First, you have to win the butt smotherers. <laughs> and here's the thing. Lena Dunham loves Hillary, too. Do you consider yourself a feminist? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I 
seen Lena Dunham that excited since HBO made its office clothing optional. <laughs> It's so great. Lena was excited about Hillary, especially because Hillary didn't seem excited about Hillary. Sometimes it is, you know, choices between people that none of whom excite you, but study it enough to figure out, okay, if I vote for this person over that person, I'm more likely to see progress on something I care about. If you can't get excited, be pragmatic and do it anyway. <laughs> if you can't get excited, be pragmatic and do it anyway. <laughs> that is the worst hype speech I've ever heard in my life. Okay, we're already getting a little bit long in the tooth here, so let me show you the last thing I wanna show you here. The interview, it's very balanced and actually showcases something that's very rare these days. My guest tonight is the co-founder of Tinder and is now the founder and CEO of the dating app Bumble. Please welcome Whitney Wolf. Good to have you. Let's, let's talk about Bumble. This is the craziest thing ever. So I remember when a lot of the staff used Tinder and then they used Bumble and then a lot of the women were like, I love Bumble more, I love Bumble more. And wow. I'm like, what is Bumble? Bumble is an app where women have to make the first move. So you both That's like right. each other and yes. then... So if you both match or if you both like each other, you become a connection and then the woman has 24 hours to say something interesting to me so the the woman has to make the first move yes she does why because the current landscape of dating right now all the expectation is on the man to make the first move and that's broken because what if you're shy what if you're nervous what if you are tired of doing that and on the contrary women are expected to sit on their hands so I can walk out of a board meeting or I can you know leave any type of exciting it you know unique experience yeah. traveling doing whatever independently but I'm not allowed to text a guy first. Well, you can. I can. But you shouldn't. <laughs> so we're all about equality, of yes. course. We're not trying to put women above men, and we're not trying to put men below women, or, you know, vice versa. Really, we're looking at real-life scenarios right now. Right now, the real-life world does not say men and women are equal in dating. They're just not. And so by giving the woman a boost up, a, a slight boost up, saying, hey, just be confident, make the first move, and taking the pressure away from the man just for that first step, we feel like it's evening it out a bit. I like that we take the pressure off the man. There's a lot of okay. pressure on men. Glad you like that. Sorry. Wow. Classical feminism. That thing that used to exist, but hardly does anymore. That thing that modern day, quote, feminists pretty much laugh at. <laughs> men and women being equal. That's so silly. Women are clearly much better than men. Anyway, that's about it. The new Daily Show is pretty good. The Nightly Show, which replaced the Colbert Report, is pretty terrible. It's basically about as biased as the old Daily Show with Jon Stewart was. And Stephen Colbert, yes, that's his name, it is not Stephen Colbert, is currently hooping up the late show by being incredibly biased. I saw that one coming a mile away. Man, he was funny on the rapport, but like when he's out of character, he's just another liberal swear word. I try to keep these videos PG. Okay, bye. <laughs>